No Japanese info by Japanese people. There. Call me. Hey there, it's Naoto. What comes to your mind when you hear Japanese castle? I suppose one of the most common answers would be Castle's Tower, which is called Tenshu. Tenshu is a preeminently cool entity which is normally located in the center of the castle site. In fact, Tenshu seems to be regarded as the most iconic feature of Japanese castle. In Japan, there were more than 20,000 castles, including ruins. However, when it comes to Tenshu, there are just 12 remaining castles tower, despite the tremendous number of identified castles. So here's something I want to ask you. Do you know the reason why there is just a handful of castles with tension? Was it a kind of privilege to build tension? The answer is right after this. Before we get down to the nitty gritty, I'd like to share the overview of Tenshu. What is Tenshu in the first place? Actually, Japanese castles can be categorized into three types. In the early days, normal castles had been built on mountains. This is what we call Yamajiro, literally a uh, mountain castle. Japanese castles were seeking for robust defensiveness on grounds that samurai were aiming for setting up a base for fighting. This is an essential point of Japanese castles. Castles were for fighting. And the castles on mountain had some advantages for defensiveness, in that they can utilize the topography there. But as the time went by, samurai began to build castle at relatively flat places as well. Behind it, the essence of Japanese castle was changing. In addition to the robust defensiveness, samurai started to seek for better convenience for governance over their territory. In this way, there came to be three types of castles. Castle on mountains, castle in cities, and in the middle of those, castle on hills. Now, let's get back on track. Tension. Basically, it was not until the emergence of castles on hills, samurai started to build tension. Castles on mountain tend to have no tension, and basically the facilities are relatively simple. I mean, there is no such thing as a uh, huge architecture, because castle on mountains used to be a temporary base for fighting. Now, another question pops up. What was the inception of building tension? There was one preeminent samurai called Oda Nobunaga. It was he who began to build Tenshu. So the very first Tenshu in Japanese history was built at Nobunaga's castle, Azuchi Castle. Nobunaga is known as a person who was curious to absorb foreign cultures and eager to try something new. He was a very unconventional samurai, and Azuchi Castle of him was astonishingly unconventional as well. From the historical perspective, it is clear that Azuchi Castle transformed the way of castle. All of the castles that were built after the emergence of the Azuchi Castle were much affected by the transformation. One of the newcomers in castle's basic facility was Tenshu. Tenshu was the very last facility for defensiveness. Now, let's see the inside of Tenshu. There are some gimmicks for attacking enemies. Ishi Otoshi is a good example. If you are curious to know the fascinating gimmicks of Japanese castle, please check out my previous video too. And simultaneously, Tenshu represents the power of samurai. It tends to be the most splendid facility in castle compared with other ones. To sum up this section, castle had been just a place for fighting, but due to the emergence of Azuchi Castle, castle became the place for showing their power as well. During the war period in Japan, some lies were so eager to build more and more castles, but in 1600, one of the biggest battles in Japanese history broke out. That is called Battle of Sekigahara. This battle was so to say East versus West. And the thing is, this battle broke out in order to clarify who has a right to unify Japan. In the end, Ies Tokugawa, who was the head of Eastern Army, won this battle. Thus, Japan came to be unified, and the war period was finally terminated. That means we came to be able to enjoy relatively peaceful time. Correspondingly, the role of castle changed again, because samurai no longer joined in the battles. And meanwhile, a drastic law was established by Tokugawa shogunate. It is called Ikoku Ichijore, and this demands samurai to have only one castle per prefecture. At such time, there used to be 3,000 castles nationwide. But due to this law, the number of castles was drastically decreased to 170. 95% of the castles was demolished instantly. In addition, another law, which was established in 1873, accelerated the demolition of the castles. This law was called Haijore, which demanded to break up almost all of the castles. Basically, those kind of laws were aiming to prevent liberium using castle as a base. But there were some exceptions that were lucky enough to be saved from this danger. 
In the end, there remained 40 castles. But it required so much effort to maintain castles. Especially Tenshu needs more careful treatment as well as money to maintain. So sadly, some Tenshu were also demolished, even though they could survive from the sequence of the two laws. What I want to tell you in the end of this video is, Tenshu is not the only one place to see. Indeed, Tenshu is beautiful, attractive, but please never forget that Tenshu is just a part of the entire facilities. Please look wider. Japanese castles are fulfilled with tactics, intellect, and some stories. I'm really sure if you pay more attention to the entire treasure of the castle, it will be more attractive to visit castles. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. All of your comments, likes, and subscription would be free appreciated. See you next time on the Japan Quest. Arigatou gozaimashita.